Hi, Golden Eagles. This is Mr. Sarkeesian with some information about returning to school. But before I get into things, I would first like to thank all of our parents and guardians for all of the hard work you're doing with our students. Students, you're doing an amazing job keeping up with your academics, and I really, really appreciate the great job that you're doing. And to our teachers, I want to thank our teachers very, very much for going above and beyond in this challenging and unique situation that we're in. So to our whole entire community, I can't thank you enough for the job that you're doing. So moving forward, I'd like to talk a little bit about what the plan for secondary school sites is. So our current plan is to return students to face-to-face -to -face instruction starting January 5th. And for us to be able to do this, following all of the guidelines in place, including the social distancing and mask wearing, we have to do this in a hybrid setting. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about the hybrid model and what opportunities are still gonna be available through Clovis Connect. We also have a bunch of protocols put in place for health and safety and for cleaning and sanitation, which I will get into as well. So a couple of things I want you to think about as we talk about the hybrid model, continuing on with Clovis Connect and distance learning models are two things that go into this. One is instructional minutes and maximizing the most amount of instructional minutes. The other is the social interaction piece that being on a school campus provides to our students. I know many of you have many different factors in, in deciding what model is gonna be best for you. So the hybrid model is the best blend between balancing both these instructional minutes and that social interaction piece. Obviously in a traditional model, you maximize both. And right now in our distance learning model, um, it is increasing those instructional minutes based on the way we have our bell schedule structured. So some things to think about moving forward is how are instructional minutes gonna impact your decision and how is that factor of social interaction on the school campus gonna impact that decision? So the end of this week, you're gonna be receiving a survey and um, it's gonna have in there what option you would like to select through hybrid model or the Clovis Connect model. So. It's gonna have a lot of useful information about the health and safety protocols, the cleaning and sanitation, and what other information um, about how school is going to look uh, for, for you to help make the best decision, whether you're gonna to return to face-to-face -to -face instruction or maintain the online Clovis Connect model. So in this survey, there'll be a lot of information and just wanna remind you most likely at the bottom of the survey or the bottom of the email will be that survey link. Um, so I don't want you to get too overwhelmed with all of that information moving forward. So what is a hybrid schedule? A hybrid schedule is where a student body is separated into two different tracks. In this case, to follow state and Fresno County safety guidelines, we will have two tracks of students for face-to-face -face instruction. We're simply gonna call those track A and track B. Each track will be on campus for face-to-face -face instruction on alternate days as to keep social distancing, as well as following all of those safety and health protocols in place. Since our students are gonna be on tracks, there may be some schedule and or teacher changes that occur, which is why we were looking at this January 5th date uh, to have more of a natural break um, so that we can continue the rest of the semester with the schedule that you're currently on. But anytime we make changes like this at semester, even on a traditional model, there are chances where schedules could get changed or teachers could get um, changed as well. So we will do everything we can to keep everything in line as best as possible. But the situation that we're in right now um, in balancing these classes for social distancing may um, include some, some teacher or schedule changes. Uh, students are still expected to complete asynchronous work at home on the days they are not on campus fa for face-to-face -face instruction. So that is really no different than some of those opportunities our students are facing right now um, on those days where they are not connecting with maybe their odd period teacher or their even period teacher. So what if I want to continue with Clovis Connect? Uh, Clovis Connect is the online option that you will see on the parent survey. Clovis Connect is what we are currently doing right now um, with students and teachers on Zoom and that day-to-day -day interaction. Um, our bell schedule is gonna follow similar 
directly to the hybrid model. Um, and again, there may be some um, schedule changes and teacher changes as well. What's gonna be really, really important for us is to get that data back as to which model you're choosing so that we can build the best master schedule possible moving forward to support all of our students. So here's a quick look at what the Clovis West and Kasner hybrid schedule is gonna look like. So we have up here, um, Monday is going to be an all day Zoom with students um, seeing each teacher. This is gonna be track A and track B at the same time. Um, so all students will be connecting with their teachers on that day uh, for 45 minutes, which is an increase uh, from, from our current Monday schedule. Following um, throughout the week through Tuesday through Friday, what you're gonna see is a day where track A is gonna see their odd periods on Tuesday, then a day where the track B students are gonna see their odd periods on Wednesday. Then track A is gonna come back to campus on Thursday to see their even classes, even period classes. And then on Friday, track B is going to come on campus to see their even classes. On our off track days, so on Tuesday when track A is at school and track B is at home, track B will be doing the asynchronous work. And there will be a homeroom check-in for track B students at the end of the day. And then that flip-flops on Wednesday and it flip-flops again on Thursday and it flip-flops again on Friday. Another thing I'd like to point out in this schedule is the end of the day and lunch distribution happens after those three block periods. Um, so students will be released at 1250. What it will look like on campus is we will have a lunch distribution and then students will, um, through whatever transportation means, make their way back home, whether that's busing or getting picked up or walking, those options are all gonna be available. But lunch will be, be not served on campus, but will be picked up and um, students will go home and have that meal at home. Here are some things you can expect with reopening with our um, health and safety guidelines. So our facilities are continually being um, disinfected and cleaned on a regular basis at different intervals throughout the day. And the deepest cleaning is happening in the evening when our uh, fog machines are coming through and sanitizing the desks in the classroom. Uh, there will be hand sanitizer in the classrooms as well. Um, and we have spray for the desks that disinfect the desks as well. Families will be conducting daily health screening at home and we will be doing temperature checks for students as they come onto campus as well. We have protocols in place for contact tracing in the event a student becomes ill. And face coverings are gonna be required for all staff and students while on campus. Here are some things um, to think about when your child is at home. Um, some symptoms that we will be looking for or that you may be looking for are listed such as fever and chills, cough, fatigue, muscle and body aches. The list is there for you to review. Um, students that exhibit those symptoms on campus will um, be maybe moved to a sick room, sick child room on campus where parents and guardians will have to pick them up. Students, um, like I said, will need to be masked and socially distanced. Staff will wear appropriate uh, personal protective equipment. Um, students that do exhibit symptoms will need to remain home for 10 days after showing symptoms um, and will not be able to return to campus until certain protocols are met for the, and this is for the safety of all students. So please take a look at this slide if you wanna pause the video to read more carefully about that. Some next steps over the next few days, what I would ask for all of you is to please, please, please ask questions. Contact the administrative team here on campus, contact counselors. Please be sure you take your survey and uh, please be looking for more communication. There's gonna be many, many questions along the way. So we will be sure to host some meetings for you to be able to answer those or ask those questions and get answers. Um, I hope I've explained enough about the hybrid model moving forward. 
And um, we respect whatever choice that you feel is best for your family at this time. And we are doing everything that we can to, within the guidelines, accommodate students to be able to come back on campus and see those teachers. So we look forward to the rest of the year. We look forward as you, as your students can, as your students continue to be successful through the remainder of the semester and um, look forward to these opportunities moving forward into the second semester. So take care Golden Eagles, stay safe, and we will be in touch very, very soon.